Well, good morning, uh, and um, hope everyone had a, a very nice Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, we're just waiting for uh, Member Bottas and forth, but we will get started. I'm sure he'll be on shortly. And before we start, I'd just like to read this. Today's meeting is being live streamed and recorded on the Township of Muskoka Lakes website and YouTube channel. By participating in the open public meeting today, you are consenting to your image, voice, and comments being recorded and posted online. Thank you very much. And we'll just change this here. Um, moved by member uh, Quinn, seconded by member Green. Uh, do you resolve the committee of adjustment agenda dated October 12th, 2021 be adopted? All those in favor? That is carried. And the next uh, resolution is uh, moved by member Creaser, second by member Quinn. Be it resolved that the minutes dated September 13th, 2021 be adopted and approved as circulated. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's carried. Good morning, Chair. Apologies for the tardy arrival. Well, that's fine. Figured you'd be in any minute, so thank you. I clicked on the wrong Zoom. Uh oh, <laughs> very good. And um, Rachel, would you like to? Uh, yeah. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. It is required that I make a few statements and then I will explain the procedures of the hearing. This electronic hearing is being held in accordance with section 238 of the Municipal Act 2001 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The members of the Committee of Adjustment present are Chair Alan Edwards, members Joe Quinn, Lisa Grogan-Green, Rob Bosomworth, and Sharon Creaser. I confirm that we have a quorum. <clears throat> the members of Township staff present are Derek Hammond, CAO, David Pink, Director of Development Services and Planning uh, and Environmental Sustainability, sorry, Bryce Sharp, Manager of Planning, Caitlin Walker, Planner One, Kristen Darling, Planner One, Sam Soya, Planner Two, uh, Lauren Cochran, Planning Services Assistant, Elizabeth Markle, Planning Clerk, and myself, Rachel Mahalan, Secretary Treasurer of the Committee of Adjustment. Public input on this October 12th, 2021 agenda was invited at the following email address, planning at muskokalakes.ca. It should be noted the motions have been pre-populated with random movers and seconders to expedite the meeting. When it is time to vote, members shall physically raise their hand until the chair has confirmed the vote. If the vote is unclear, a verbal vote shall be recorded. This is not considered a recorded vote. Now I will explain the hearing process. The planner will provide an explanation and purpose of the application. The date notice was circulated and will present any submissions received. The planner will also provide the planning staff's comments. Committee will then hear from the applicant or the applicant's agent if they wish to add any information or to substantiate their proposal. Please provide your name, mailing address, and postal code for our records. Committee will hear from those in support of the application and those in opposition to the application. Again, please provide your name, mailing address, and postal code for our records. If you're here to speak on an application, please wait to raise your hand in Zoom until the planner presents the relevant application. The committee will then hear the applicant or applicant's agent respond to any questions or concerns raised. The committee will then have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant and or staff. The committee will debate the application and make a decision based on the information presented at the hearing. For consent applications, committee is required to give the effect of written and oral submissions in their decision. For minor variance applications, committee is required to give the effect of written and oral submissions and reasons for the decision. It must be noted, the chair has a vote on each application and can participate in the discussion. There is a 20 day appeal period from the date of the decision. 
In the case of a minor variance application, a building permit is not available until after the appeal period and no appeals are received. When you are present at the hearing, please provide us your name and mailing address. Any presentation is limited to five minutes unless otherwise permitted by the committee. Please note the resolutions are automatically written in the positive to assist in completing decisions as opposed to writing out each resolution. This does not in any way mean an application is going to be approved. And one last thing, please take down the pink sign that was posted advertising this meeting. Thanks. Thank you very much. And I have to ask, is there any conflict of interest on any of the applications today? Okay, very good. And the um, first application is A7821 born. And that I believe is Mr. Soya. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the first application to be heard this morning is consent application B7821ML in the name of Bourne. Subject lands are located at 1650 Brackenridge Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted cons consent sketch on page 38 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to create one additional vacant lot with frontage on Brackenrig Road, which is also known as Muskoka Road 25. Uh, the proposed severed lot is 10 acres in size with a lot frontage of 754 feet. The proposed retained lot is 55 acres in size with a lot frontage of 1,203 feet, also on Brackenrig Road. Uh, both the severed and retained lots are vacant, naturally forested, and no development is proposed at this time. Notice of this public hearing was circulated 15 days in advance of the meeting in accordance with the Planning Act, and three comments have been received to date. Uh, the first submission is by Bell Canada, advising that Bell does not have any concerns. The second submission is by Public Works Technician Tim Sopko, advising that it is recommended that the approval be subject to the availability of an entrance permit from the District of Muskoka for the severed lot. And uh, the third submission is by Emily Crowder, Planner at the District Municipality of Muskoka. The recommendation from Ms. Crowder's letter reads as follows. District staff would not be opposed to the approval provided that the appropriate development control techniques are used to direct development outside of an identified water course feature and to, and to conserve valuable conifer thermal cover, deer feeding areas and movement corridors and that the following be implemented as conditions of consent. Uh, that the applicant obtain a conditional permit from the District of Muskoka for, for the proposed severed and retained lots for access onto the district road, and that the lands be subject to an agreement with the District Municipality of Muskoka, uh, pursuant to Section 5126 of the Planning Act, respecting the location of wells in relation to the district road. No submissions from members of the public have been received. I have prepared a detailed planning report for committee's consideration. Uh, staff have no concerns with the application. The water course that uh, crosses the property is already within the environmental protection zone. And with regards to the mapped stratum to deer wintering habitat, it has been noted by staff that both of the large proposed lots contain only sparse conifer vegetation, most of which is located along a stream on the retained lot. This feature and the surrounding area is within the environmental protection zone. Standard, standard conditions of consent have been recommended involving that a registrable description of the separate lot and any re required rights of way be submitted along with a registered copy of the reference plan. Uh, confirmation that the township is satisfied that the proposed lots can be adequately serviced by individual on-site septic systems and that cash in lieu of parkland be dedicated to the township in the amount of 5% of the assessed value of the newly created lot or the entire lands, whichever is less. The two conditions requested by the District of Muskoka have also been added to the resolution before committee this morning. Those being that the applicant satisfy the district with regards to entrance permit requirements along the district road and that the lands be subject to an agreement with respect to location of wells in proximity to the road. No further comments at this time, but I would be happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Mr. Sawyer. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here? He is here. I believe it's uh, Mr. Allen. Thank you, Chair Edwards. And good morning, members of committee, members of staff, and members of the public tuning in today. Um, thank you, committee, for taking the time to hear this application, and thank you, staff, for uh, their thorough explanation and positive recommendation. I do have a brief presentation I'd like to share if um, someone may cue that up for me. As Mr. Soya noted, the property is located at 1650 Brackenrig Road, and this severance application does propose one new severed lot. The severed lot, which is located at the north end of the subject property. Oh, that's not a good sign. Uh, it might be a verbal presentation and no visuals. Um, did you want to try that one more time? That looks better. Thank you. Um, next slide, please. This is the location of the subject property relative to Port Carling. Next slide, please. Uh, the subject lands are approximately 65 acres with more than half a kilometer of frontage on Brackenridge Road. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the zoning of the subject property. As Mr. Soya mentioned, there is a small water course that crosses through the property and it is zoned EP1. You can see the location of the EP1 and the rural zoning on the remainder of the lot. Next slide, please. Uh, the proposed severance, as mentioned, created one new lot. The area of the severed lot at the northern end is four hectares in area with 366 meters of frontage. The retained lot has 22 hectares of lot area and uh, approximately 230 meters of frontage. The minimum requirement is 180 meters of frontage and four hectares of lot area. Next slide, please. The severed lot is proposed to be developed with a residential dwelling. Um, the planning framework and the official plan limits lot creation in the countryside residential area to one additional lot per land holding. This lot has never been previously severed and requires a minimum frontage of six, 600 feet and a minimum acreage of 10 acres. Uh, the official plan directs new lot creation to frontage on year-round publicly maintained roads and must be sized appropriately to accommodate private services. Next slide, please. Uh, the permitted uses in the rural area include single detached residential uses and accessory uses, which is proposed on the subject lot. Development in the rural area should enhance and protect environmental features and can be adequately serviced. The integrity and, and vistas along roadsides are to be preserved and lots are to have general frontages to maintain the low density character of the area. Next slide, please. Here's some photos of the property. This is the existing entrance at 1650 Brackenridge Road, looking north. Next slide. This is the uh, location of the approved entrance permit that the district has granted on the severed lot, looking north. Next slide, please. Also the location of the entrance permit that the district has previously approved, looking south. Next slide. This is the, uh, the bend at the north end of the uh, severed lot. There is some fairly steep slopes and rocky slopes, but the lot is very large and there are ample opportunities for acceptable building envelopes and servicing locations on both the severed and the retained lot. Next slide, please. There's uh, some anomalies uh, associated with this property. There was a historic relocation and realignment of Brackenrig Road that resulted in a number of remnants, old roadbeds, and, uh, and small parcels that are owned by the district. Um, but uh, we've put forward uh, the suggestion that the straight line frontage of the subject lot is measured from uh, the far uh, east side to the far west side of the lot and uh, greatly exceeds the minimum 180 meters of minimum frontage. Next slide, please. So in, um, in terms of analysis, the severed and retained lot comply with the minimum area and frontage requirements of the RU1 zone. The severed and the retained lots are large enough to be adequately serviced. Uh, the entrance permit has been approved uh, by the district for the severed lot. 
The retained lot is currently accessed by an existing approved driveway. The naturally vegetated and forested roadside vistas will be maintained and the future dwelling constructed will be built in compliance with the requirements of the zoning bylaw, setbacks, coverage, height, et cetera. Next slide, please. In conclusion, it's my professional opinion that this um, proposal is consistent with the provincial policy statement, conforms with the district and township official plans and represents good planning. And I would like to mention too, that actually no one reminded me, um, my address is 104 Kimberly Avenue, Bracebridge, Ontario, P1L1Z8. I'd be uh, happy to answer any questions from the committee. And I um, would uh, request that the committee approve this application as per the recommendations uh, put forward by staff. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Allen. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? Yeah. Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Okay, are there questions from the members? Seeing none. Moved by member Quinn, second by member Brogan Green. Be it resolved that consent be granted for application B7821ML form, provided the following conditions are fulfilled. One, a registrable description deed of the severed lot and any required right of way being submitted to the secretary treasurer along with a registered copy of the reference plan. Two, the confirmation be received that the township is satisfied that the proposed severed and retained lots and adequately serviced by individual on-site septic systems. Three, the cash in lieu of parkland be dedicated to the township in the amount of 5% of the assessed value of the newly created vacant lot or the entire lands, whichever is less. Four, did the applicant ob obtain a conditional permit from the District of Muskoka for the proposed seven retained lots for the access to the district road? And five, that the lands are subject to an agreement with the District Municipality of Muskoka pursuant to Section 5126 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended respecting the location of wells in relationship to the district roads. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you, committee. It was nice seeing you all again. Have a great day. Thank you. And I believe uh, we don't have to, we have everything on it. Uh, that, that we need for this, and that, as far as uh, the reasons and that, it's just blanket yes, now. Yes, so. we're doing the standard reasons and effects. Good, so I standard reason and effects. Yes. Good. And uh, B7921. Uh, and I believe that is, again, uh, Mr. Sawyer. So, so, Sawyer, sorry. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Uh, the next application to be heard is consent application B7921ML in the name of Polycus and Bennett. The subject lands are located at uh, 1009 Ed Breeze Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted consent sketch on page 59 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to create one additional vacant rural lot. Uh, the proposed severed Lot is 43 acres in size and abuts both Ed Breeze Road and Old Perry Sound Road with a lot frontage of 1,188 feet on Ed Breeze Road. The proposed retained lot is developed for residential purposes and is a corner lot at the intersection of Ed Breeze Road and Old Perry Sound Road. This retained lot has a size of five acres and a lot frontage of 755 feet on Ed Breeze Road and is located within the boundary of the hamlet of Allswater. Aside from the area of residential development on the retained lot, both proposed lots are forested and no additional development is proposed at this time. Notice of this public hearing was circulated 14 days in advance of the meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and three comments have been received to date. Oh, I believe four comments. Um, the first submission is by Bill by Bell Canada, uh, advising that Bell does not have any concerns. 
the second submission is by Public Works Technician Tim Sopko, advising that it is recommended that the approval be subject to the availability of an entrance permit for the severed lot. The third submission is by Emily Crowder, Planner at the District Municipality of Muskoka. The recommendation from Ms. Crowder's letter reads as follows. District staff would not be opposed to the approval of the application provided the previously completed D4 assessment adequately demonstrates that there will be no adverse effects or, or risk of health and safety resulting from the proximity of the proposed development to the operating non-municipal waste disposal site to the satisfaction of the Township of Muskoka Lakes. In this case, a stump dump located on a nearby property was recently assessed and the boundary of this site was delineated. It was found that the likelihood of groundwater contamination is low and that the concentration of methane gas produced by the facility or migrating from the site is insignificant. When measured from the delineated boundary of the stump dump, both the retained and severed lots are located outside of the 500 meter potential influence area of the site and township staff have no concerns. Uh, the fourth submission is from Barry Leslie, a property owner to the south along Ed Breeze Road. Mr. Leslie expressed concerns about the potential future residential development that may be permitted or the scale of the future residential development on the severed lot and whether there are any related potential impacts to water tables as well as the ability of, for the new lot to be serviced by a septic system. These comments were submitted prior to Mr. Leslie having received the public notice. Mr. Leslie has now been provided with a copy of the notice as well as today's staff report, which indicates that the severed lot is zoned rural RU1 where permitted residential uses include only a single residential dwelling and accessory uses. I have prepared a detailed planning report for committee's consideration. Staff have no concerns with the application subject to standard conditions of consent, including that a registrable description of the severed lot and any required rights of way be submitted along with a registered copy of the reference plan. Confirmation that the township is satisfied that the proposed severed lot can be adequately serviced by individual on-site septic systems and that any problems identified with the existing sewage system on the retained lot be corrected and that cash in lieu of parkland be dedicated to the township in the amount of 5% of the assessed value of the newly created vacant lot or the entire lands, whichever is less. And also a condition that requires an entrance permit to be submitted, um, to be obtained from the township's public works department has also been included. Uh, I have no further comments at this time, but would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Soya. And uh, is the applicant or applicant's agent here? I think we have the agent. Yes, good, good morning, Chair Edwards. My name is Helena Kramer and I'm with Marie Poirier Planning and Associates and we're the agents authorized to act on behalf of the owners of 1009 Ed Breeze Road. Um, may I request permission to share my screen? I'd prefer to speak to the application with the- uh, Yeah, Stubbins. and uh, can we have your, your address? In oh Kobe? yes, sorry, <laughs> sorry, thank you. I'm at uh, 44 Unit A King William Street here in Huntsville, P1H1G3. Thank you. And would I be able to have permission to share my screen, please? It looks like I'm allowed to, but just no. Nope. No, they can't. They got to email a presentation to us. Oh, Sorry, okay. Have... All right, that's that's fine. It's just the the severance sketch that's attached to the uh, the staff. Uh, uh, and now we we have that with our uh, package anyway. Okay. Yes. Perfect. So the subject property currently has approximately forty nine acres and uh, has 407 meters of frontage on Old Perry Sound Road and approximately 592 meters of frontage on Ed Breeze Road. The proposed severed lot is comprised of the rural one zoned portion of the parent property and is proposed to be 43 acres with 362 meters of frontage on Ed Breeze Road and 325 meters of frontage on Old Perry Sound Road. The retained lot, which is currently developed with an existing dwelling, would be comprised of the rural residential hamlet zoned portion of the property and is proposed to be five acres with 230 meters of frontage on Ed Breeze Road and 82 meters of frontage on Old Perry Sound Road. Both severed and proposed lots exceed zoning requirements and we concur with staff's recommendation for provisional approval and the recommended conditions and respectfully request committee approve this application as set out in staff's recommendation 
though I'm here to answer any questions should committee members have any. And thank you so much for taking the time to hear this application today. Thank you very much. And is there anyone uh, wishing to speak in support of this application? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? No. no? Okay, there's uh, no speaker. So is there any uh, questions from the members? Yes, Mr. Bosomworth. I uh, just want to be sure that there's enough setback from the garage and the septic system to the back line lot or lot line. Can't tell on the drawing. I suspect there is no issue, but. Uh, and that, can the agent uh, answer that? Yes, so generally all consent applications are required to meet zoning requirements as well. So that would be a, a requirement of the, of the approval is that it would meet all required setbacks. Thank you. Okay, thank you. They probably would have asked for a, uh, a uh, consent as well for that. So a minor variance, so. Yeah, there's a condition requiring, uh, and that, and and there are uh, conditions uh, in there as well. Is there anyone else? Any questions? Seeing none. Move by Member Bosenworth, second by Member Creaser. Be it resolved that, be it re sorry, be it resolved that consent be granted to application B seventy nine twenty one ML Perkis and Bennett. Provided the following conditions are fulfilled. One, registered description deed of the severed lot and any required right away be submitted to the secretary treasurer along with a registered copy of the reference plan. Two, the confirmation be received that the township is satisfied that the severed lot is satisfactory for on site sewage disposal and that any problems identified with any existing sewage system on retained lot be corrected to the satisfaction of the township. Three, mm -hmm. that cash in lieu of parkland be dedicated to the township in the amount of 5% of the assessed value of the newly created vacant lot for the entire lands, whichever is less. And four, that an entrance permit on the, from the Public Works Department of the Township of Muskoka Lakes be obtained. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor. And that's carried. Thank you. Have a good morning, everybody. You're welcome. And the next application is uh, B8081-21 ML, Lang Mursky. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Uh, the next applications to be heard are consent applications B80 and 81-21 ML in the name of Lang and Mursky. The subject lands comprise the westerly half of Highland Island on Lake Rosso. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted consent uh, severance sketches starting on page 84 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the applications are summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to create two severed lots and one retained lot on Highland Island, uh, all with lot frontage on Lake Rosso. Severed lot one has a lot area of 11.1 .1 acres and a lot frontage of 1,259 feet along the northern shore of the island. The proposed lot is vacant and the applicant has indicated that it is to be conveyed to the Muskoka Conservancy. Severed lot two has a lot area of 6.5 acres and a lot frontage of 725 feet. This lot contains a large derelict dwelling and a dock. The retained lot has a lot area of three acres and a lot frontage of 512 feet. The retained lot is vacant and no development is currently proposed. Notice of this public hearing was circulated 14 days in advance of the meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and uh, one comment has been received to date. Comment is from the Township's uh, Public Works Technician, Tim Sopko, advising that his department has no concerns. Uh, no submissions from members of the public have been received. I have prepared a detailed planning report for committee's consideration. Staff have no concerns with the application subject to the recommended conditions of consent, which include that a registrable description of the severed lots and any rights of way be submitted along with a registered copy of the reference plan. 
that confirmation be received that the township is satisfied that the severed and retained lots can be adequately serviced by individual on-site septic systems, that cash in lieu of parkland be dedicated to the township in the amount of 5% of the assessed value of the severed lots or the entire lands, whichever is less, and that a consent agreement be entered into to be registered on title and um, to include several requirements. Uh, this agreement will require the applicants to agree not to sever the retained lot or separate lot two. Also, the agreement will not permit the owners to use public parking and docking facilities as the pr principal means of access to the severed and retained lots, but rather to use the approved waterfront landing at uh, 1662 Judd Haven Road uh, for long-term access um, to the proposed lots uh, or that other sufficient means um, for the provision be um, provided for such access. And the agreement also will require the implementation of the recommendations of the environmental impact study prepared by Beacon Environmental. Uh, I have no further comments at this time, but I would be happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sawyer. And is the applicant or applicant's age here? I believe it's Mr. Fauna. Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, thank you, Chair Edwards, uh, members of the uh, committee, uh, Stephen Fauna, Northern Vision Planning Limited, 109 Meadow Heights Drive, Bracebridge, Ontario, P1L1A4. I'm here representing uh, Dawn and Karen Lang, as well as uh, Seth and Teresa Mursky. They are the owners of this property. This is uh, the west half of uh, Highland Island, also known as uh, Warner Island. Um, thank you very much uh, for staff's uh, report. Um, certainly we have no objection to the um, uh, proposed conditions uh, and would note that uh, they have agreed that there be no further severance of uh, Sever Lot 2 as well as the retained lot. I do have comments, however, regarding cash in lieu of parkland, and I'll do that in my uh, presentation. So I'm hoping that we can line up with uh, what council did in that particular case. So if I could have my PowerPoint presentation up, that would be great. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, next slide, please. So again, it's a proposal for the creation of uh, three lots in the west side of Highland Island. Next. And you'll note here, here the sizes, and I'll just go down to the retained lot because from an area perspective, this is the actually the smallest lot. Um, it's uh, just over three acres, but you'll see the actual frontage is uh, considerable, um, over a thousand uh, feet of frontage, but it is on a point. So, but all of these lots are quite large. Next. This is the uh, proposed severance uh, sketch. You can see the northerly lot. Um, severed lot one is uh, going to be uh, dedicated to the Muskoka Conservancy. And we do have a letter intent uh, from the Conservancy in that regard. I wanna also point out too, on the east side, you'll see there was a previous application. This came through council because it also had a concurrent rezoning application for a waterfront landing, which is on Royal Muskoka Island. So. Um, that's why uh, it went through council and not through this committee. Uh, now that that rezoning has been completed and has gone through the appeal period, then uh, we don't have any accompanying zoning application with this. So it's a straight severance application. You'll see the location of the existing buildings uh, on the property. And I've got some photographs of the old uh, dwelling. Next. And this just shows the contours. Uh, certainly there are some areas of uh, slopes uh, on the property, but uh, the proposed lot sizes uh, certainly far exceed what's required by the official plan for steeply sloped uh, lots. Next. So in terms of the characteristics of the island, this is the very point, this is the retained lot. Um, and you can see actually we'll focus in the next one will be the central uh, area of this lot, next. So you can see where there's actually access to the island. One of the things you have to consider when you have island properties is that temporary access for construction purposes. So this is um, uh, an excellent location right here. Next. And this is up on the island looking actually in the other direction and it does certainly have a very thick um, shoreline vegetative uh, buffer. Next. And if I turn around from that last shot, basically this is a, a building site uh, and this is identified by Beacon Environmental. And I would suggest that there's actually more than one building site on this property. Again, it's over three acres. Next. 
This is the uh, frontage of proposed severed lot one. Um, you can see obviously very natural. Um, you can tell by the uh, nature of the, um, the tree canopy that there are slopes uh, on the property. And uh, you can see that it actually fronts onto a narrow water body uh, further down and you'll see that in the next slide. Next. So this is actually a narrow water body uh, between uh, Highland Island and uh, Royal Muskoka Island being on the left. Royal Muskoka Island is a fairly heavily developed uh, area and uh, certainly a number of uh, boathouses you can see there in shoreline structures. All of the north side of Highland Island will be dedicated to Muskoka Conservancy. So uh, I know that the, most of the people anyways on uh, Royal Muskoka Island are quite pleased with that. So next. This is a, a portion of the property on the uh, severed lot one. This was identified by um, uh, Beacon Environmental. This shows the shoreline buffer area. Next. And this shows a possible building site. Again, this, this property is huge. So you know, there's lots of opportunity for uh, uh, building on that particular lot if it were to be built on, which is not the plan. It's uh, going to be going to Muskoka Conservancy. I'm going to explain that in a few minutes uh, why we're looking at it as a building lot. Next. This is the uh, proposed several lot two. This, there is an opening up to the uh, old existing uh, dilapidated uh, dwelling that's there. Uh, this is probably about the only opening in the shoreline. Uh, I'll have a couple of other pictures of that as well. Next. And this is looking up uh, into the old uh, dilapidated uh, dwelling. Next. This is uh, to the uh, west, if you will, uh, frontage along to the west. Um, again, it can be a building site uh, as well. There are certainly other building sites on this lot. I would imagine the current site is most likely to be used for anyone who wishes to uh, develop the property in the future. Next. And this is the uh, front of the, uh, the old dwelling. I'm sure it was an old grand place at one point in time, but uh, obviously it's fallen into disrepair and uh, certainly hasn't been used for many, many years. Next. And this is uh, taken from the northeast side. Uh, this is the uh, area of the building that goes back from the waterfront. Again, I'm sure it was a grand, quite a grand place at one time. Next. And this shows the view down. This is actually down in front of the dwelling a ways and just shows your view um, towards the south, uh, out that small opening, if you will. Next. And this is just showing some of the shoreline buffer. Uh, this would be to the west of the uh, west of the dwelling. Next. So in terms of planning analysis, certainly the lot size uh, more than meet the requirements of the district and the uh, township uh, official plan and lot creation is permitted on Lake Rosso. Next. The island zone WR5, and again, we far exceed those. Uh, there the waterfront landing has been rezoned to WL, uh, waterfront landing, and that was done in a prior application that was approved earlier this year. Next. So in terms of the reason why um, the uh, lot one is going to be conveyed to the conservancy, uh, it will retain the existing forested landscape uh, in that area facing Royal Muskoka Island. Uh, it'll eliminate future development in this narrow channel. Um, and it represents the first conservancy owned land on Lake Rosso. And um, development will be forced to the south and west side of this particular island. I will also further say that the uh, conservancy, I have spoken to Scott Young, who is the executive director. He says they have no uh, preference as to whether this is conveyed as two separate lots or one consolidated lot. So uh, um, because of the nature of the applications, currently it's going to be two separate lots. They have no objection to that. Next. And again, we have a letter of intent from the Conservancy and once donated, um, they will apply for uh, rezone TP1. I wanted to mention at this point in time why this is considered sort of as a building lot. Um, when um, a building lot, I suppose, gives it sort of its highest and best use, uh, gives it the highest value, the, an appraisal is done and then there's a tax receipt is given by the Conservancy based on that appraisal. And obviously my clients want that value to be as high as possible to try and make this all work financially. 
they purchased the island originally, I think it was uh, 10 or $12 million. They're dedicating over half of the island to the Muskoka Conservancy. They are creating the lots on the south side to actually help pay for uh, the whole transaction, if you will. And uh, I think we're, uh, you know, very close to that. Next. And an environmental impact study has been completed by Beacon, as uh, was noted uh, earlier. Next. So I wanted to point out the previous consents and uh, the approval by uh, council on that. And I really want to go down to, uh, I guess, the bottom point. Um, council, uh, after our presentation, uh, agreed not to um, take cash in lieu of parkland on severed lot one, which happens to be severed lot one in this particular case as well. The reason being the dedication of that lot to the Muskoka Conservancy, that lot in it by itself, its value is probably two to $3 million that they're dedicating uh, for preservation. And uh, council did agree with that and felt that it was not appropriate then to take cash in lieu of parkland based on that lot. And I'm uh, requesting that uh, committee of adjustment uh, do the same. Next. Oh, and just before, um, sorry, if I could just go back the, the slide there. Um, thank you. Just one further thing I wanted to note is that uh, there were a few objections at that particular time with council. A lot of them were based on the waterfront landing. Council did approve the applications and there were no appeals uh, to the approvals. Next. Uh, Mr. Fawner, can you kind of wrap it up? You've been well yep, over the I'm five minutes. Right, right to my conclusions. Thank you. So uh, again, the, uh, the lots, uh, uh, this is consistent with the PPS and they do uh, conform to the uh, official plans. And um, uh, I'll just conclude at that. Um, I think I have one other slide, but that's a little repetitive. So thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? Yes. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Seeing none, other questions from the members? No questions. Okay, I'll read the resolution. Moved by Member Creaser, second by Member Quinn, be it resolved that consent be granted for application B 808121ML, Lang, uh, Lang Mursky, provided the following conditions are fulfilled. One, a residential description deeds of the separate lots and any required right of way be submitted to the Secretary Treasurer along with the registered copy of the reference plan. Two, the confirmation be received that the township is satisfied that the separate and retained lots are satisfactory for on-site sewage disposal, that, excuse me, that any problems identified with any existing system be corrected to the satisfaction of the township. Three, the consent agreement be entered into with the township under section 5126 of the Planning Act and, the, and registered on title of the lands wherein the applicants agree not to sever the retained lot or sever lot two to implement the recommendation of the environmental impact study prepared by Beacon, Beacon Environmental and dated June 2021 and not to utilize public parking and docking facilities as the principal means of access to the severed and retained lots and to sever, and, sorry, and to secure the approved waterfront landing or other su sufficient means for long-term access to the separate and retained lots. And four, cash in lieu of parkland be dedicated to the township the amount of 5% of the assessed value of the separate lots or the entire lands, whichever is less. Are there any questions or comments? Just a second, Mr. Bonner. Yes. Yes, Mr. Bosworth. Um, I'd like to be consistent with the way council treated the previous application and have the, re the uh, requirement for cash in lieu of park be removed from the, as a condition. Yes, I, I will ask um, Mr. Sharp, if we take this out and say that land was not uh, dedicated to the uh, conservatory, uh, could we then go back to the 5%? Like how would we put that in to make sure? Chair. Uh, yes. 
Uh, maybe I was unclear. I, I don't think cash should be, I think we should waive the, the need to have a cash in lieu of. That's right. And That's you right. And you, did you hear the question I asked? If the land was, if not, the land dedicated, was not dedicated, then, then how would we bring how in would we the other land? All I asked. All I asked. Okay, I Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For you, Chair Edwards, uh, thank you for your question. I think it's uh, it's been discussed uh, quite extensively as part of the, the council process. So um, if committee was uh, looking to um, change the condition as it stands now, we could simply uh, not subject the severed lot number one to cash in lieu of parkland, um, which would mean that the retained lot, which is vacant, um, would still be subject uh, to the cash and of parkland dedication. The intention for that lot is to develop it for residential purposes. So we could easily make that uh, change. Thank Fine. you very much, Mr. Sharp. Uh, I think that we should, uh, and that delete that, but I just wanted to, uh, to the uh, committee to understand that uh, there is, is a way to, uh, if, if it wasn't and not dedicated to the uh, conservatory. So any other questions? Yes. Sorry, I am just a little confused. Are we then, are we treating this one the same way as the other severance was being treated? Basically, yes. That, that's my intent. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll strike that out. Yes. I'm thinking we should actually amend the condition? Yeah, okay, that's what I was asking. Okay. <laughs> Not because if, it, if, if yeah. all of a sudden it fell through. Yeah, yeah. Okay, We're just, just going to amend that. I don't see any problem with it because it will be dedicated to the conservatory, but there's always uh, chances where something come in. Uh, Mr. Fauna, would you like to comment? Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, for letting me speak. Uh, just to, very quickly, uh, the committee, as it knows, uh, has the ability to amend conditions in the future. So if there's yeah. any uh, ever a problem that uh, uh, is felt that Conservancy is not going to take the lands, then uh, uh, the amendment can take place and you can impose uh, cash and parkland at a later time. Okay, well, thank you very much. We just want to dot all the I's and cross the T's. And, that, and I'll tell you, it's very nice they are uh, dedicating that to the uh, the uh, conservatory. It's uh, a, a real nice gesture. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Quinn, you had a comment. Yeah, I just wondered um, with with the severance and they have a landing, these two re these two lots that are going to conservancy, they wouldn't have a parking spot there or at this time? Uh, Mr. Fauna, can you answer that? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. They, in fact, the Conservancy is being allotted one parking space at the waterfront landing. Uh, one boat parking, sorry, and two car parking spaces are actually being uh, dedicated, uh, if you will, to the Conservancy. Okay, okay thank you. Yes. You read that? Uh, yes, just a second then. <laughs> so I will just... Uh, read the, uh, the condition number four, which is now being amended to read that the cash in lieu of parkland requirement be removed as it relates to severed lot number one. Severed lot number one is the lot that's um, going to the Muskoka Conservancy. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Hart. Okay, you've heard, heard the amendment, all those in favor. Okay, any opposed? Nope, that's it. That's Kerry. Sure, if I could just indulge the committee for a minute. My mother and my aunt remember that uh, old building very well. It had a ballroom in it, and they used to go to ballroom dances on that island in the late 20s and early 30s. That's nice to know. Thank you very much. Thank you, committee. Have a great day. And Okay, thank you. And the next is um, hearings of minor variances, and that is um, A5021, Pizarri and Tandem. And uh, that is uh, Ms. Walker. 
Good morning, Chair Edwards and members of the committee. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-50-21 in the name of Bazari and Tamblin. The subject property is known municipally as 1074 Woodington Road, Unit 5. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan starting on page 208 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to construct a one-story addition to an existing boathouse, which will result in a lot coverage of 10.6% within 200 feet of the high water mark, where 10% is permitted. The requested variance is 0.6%. The applicants also propose to recognize an as-built storage structure attached to an existing gazebo, which is located 15 feet from the high water mark, where 66 feet is permitted. The requested variance is 51 feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 13 days in advance and three submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician. The Public Works Department has no objections. The second submission is by Alex Moholland, the Township's Deputy Chief Building Official. The Development Services Department has no objection. The third submission is by Carol Anderson Bagot and Jean Paul Bagot, neighboring property owners to the north. The submission is as follows. Regarding the request for variance at 1074 Unit 5 Woodington Road, we the owners at 1074 Unit 3 Woodington Road to the north oppose the variance, file number A-50-21. 1074, sorry, 1074 Unit 5 Woodington Road with the 200, with 200 feet of shoreline already has an abundance of structures and modifications to the terrain. This includes a two-story dwelling with a walkout basement that's over 5,000 square feet, a gazebo with four solid walls and attached storage on the north side within 51 feet of the high water mark, a carport that is now being converted into a garage slash bunkie, a sports court, a dock in a boathouse, a hot tub in a pump house on the north side of the gazebo, a bocce court, a fire pit and two large stone patios surrounded by extensive landscaping. The newly constructed boathouse the summer of 2021 with an entrance for two boats on the north side, 30 feet from our property is being used as a boathouse slash indoor entertainment center slash living room with furniture and decor inside. Last fall, the boat port was moved to become the carport, as you see on the plan. It is now being converted into a garage slash bunkie. The dock built around 2009 was dismantled and the boat slips that used to face the lake east were placed on the north within 30 feet of our property. Two large boats, two smaller boats and a sea do now need to maneuver in front of our property with our view and swimming within our view and swimming space in order to exit and enter the boathouse or tie up on the north side. If you refer to the plan, it is evident that a large portion of the outdoor entertainment area, boathouse dock, gazebo, hot tub, pergola, bar and barbecue area, stone patios, etc., are as close to our property as possible and we are severely impacted. Our former unobstructed view from both inside and out has been affected by various structures outdoor lighting, boat traffic, music, and general noise. Their view from 1074 Unit 5 is open with no obstructions. We feel that any additional construction is excessive and will further hinder our enjoyment of our property. Any existing or non-compliant structure should be removed. We have maintained the natural vegetation on our property and planted additional shrubs and trees, especially close to the property lines in an attempt to preserve our privacy and enjoy the innate beauty of Muskoka. Carol Anderson Bagot and Jean Paul Bagot, that letter is dated Friday, October 8th, 2021. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration. Staff are recommending that minor variance application A-50-21 be approved subject to the following. One, the removal of the fire pit patio, bowls or sports court, um, pool slash hot tub and the associated patio, the outdoor kitchen and cooking area and pergola and two, that a remedial planting plan be prepared by a qualified environmental professional and implemented through a site plan agreement, along with securities for this to the satisfaction of the township. It is also the understanding of staff that the applicant wishes to defer this application at this time to have an op opportunity to review staff's comment in further detail. I believe the agent is on the call at the moment. Staff have no further comments at this time, and I'm happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Ms. Walker. And uh, I believe uh, you said the agent is here. Okay, would you like to bring them on, please? Good morning, uh, Chair and Committee members. I'm Christy Hamilton of MPS Engineering and Design Services, PO Box 232, Nobel, Ontario, P0G1G0. Um, as per what Caitlin has said, we would um, like to defer our application and uh, review staff comments and have a sit down with staff um, to go over the issues and see what sort of uh, resolution we can come up with uh, before uh, trying to move forward with our application. Okay, very good. Uh, but I have to ask, is there anyone else wishing to speak in support? This application? Yeah. Anyone wish to speak in opposition? You can ask them, uh, the uh, person that wants to speak in opposition. You can speak now if you like. We will be uh, deferring this, but we it is a hearing, so we will hear everyone that wants to, to make comment on this. And if you'd like to speak, just raise your hand there so we can bring you in. Are they ready? Hearing it's Carol. Pardon? Her name is Carol. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the name is Carol Anderson Bagel. The address is 127 Ferris Road, Toronto, M4B1G7. Um, I just wanted to um, correct my second bullet. Uh, your, it's right on your on on your paperwork, but on my paperwork, <clears throat> I said the gazebo, which I, I did question when it was put up, whether it really was a gazebo because it has four solid walls, but whether the gazebo and attached door did Jerry on the north side within 15 feet, I, I had written down on the second bullet down, I had written 51 feet. So if uh, I, I would like that corrected somehow, if, if that's possible, or if it's not uh, relevant, then that's fine, because you already have it right on your paperwork. And uh, I guess um, I, 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 my concern is that this, this newly finished boathouse um, was when it was put in, and on the application is marked as proposed, uh, sorry, the newly finished boathouse um, was built in such a way that, that it looks to me like they were going to ask for a variance. And the idea of proposed storage uh, <clears throat> is odd considering the fact that they have an entire boathouse that they could use for storage if they so chose. Uh, but part of it is now being used as a living space. So my concern is that when <clears throat> somebody applies for a permit for something that it then ends up being used for another space. And I guess that's all I have to say right now. So do I click off? No, <laughs> my husband's yeah. guiding me through this. <laughs> This is my first Zoom meeting, so I've, I've stayed away from them with uh, like the plague, so. <laughs> <laughs> we wish we could too, but we have to. <laughs> it's okay. so much easier in that person. But uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, this okay. will be uh, actually deferred and they can uh, cannot come back again. Can, it, can you explain, the... sorry, can you explain deferred to me? What does that mean? It can come back in a month, two months? Uh... Uh, when, when they're ready, they can come back. Okay. So uh, maybe a month and maybe two months and that. Okay. They just want to get everything cleared up and that, and uh, hopefully uh, we can get this resolved to everyone's satisfaction. Thank you. And I have to ask, is there anyone else here wishing to speak in opposition? Okay. Uh, and that committee, can we actually defer this then? Okay. Thank you. Uh, so Chair, this, uh, I, I, just yes. a reminder to the applicant, uh, they said that they would come back and talk to staff. I know this committee uh, highly welcomes when uh, applicants speak to their neighbours. So uh, if they uh, want to improve their chances of, 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 of uh, 
positive view on this application for, by this committee, they certainly should be speaking to their neighbors as well. And the you second know, that I would that, make that, that, is that, if they need more storage, then why don't they put the storage and add it to the garage at the back rather than having it in the boat house. Okay, thank you very much. And that, that is a very good point. Uh, hopefully the agent is listening. It's, it's nice when you talk to the neighbors and, and, and get them on, on, on board with something rather than springing something on them. So we'll leave it at that. So this is actually deferred. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the next application is B5221. And that is Ms. Darling. Good morning. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A5221 in the name of Marks. The subject property is known municipally as 1045 Kemp Road, unit number three. I would like to direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan starting on 288 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of this application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to recognize an as-built dock addition. Relief is requested from the maximum permitted cumulative dock width where the dock is 41 feet. The permitted width is 26 feet and the variance requested is 15 feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 12 days in advance and three submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Tim Sopko, the township's public works technician and the public works department has no objections. The second submission is by Alex Mulholland, the township's deputy chief building official. The development services department has no objections. And the second submission are letters of support from both adjacent neighbors, uh, Brent Richardson and Paul Truix. And I can read their letters if you would, the committee would like. I'm yes. prepared to be, pardon? Oh, uh, yeah, if, if you would like. Yeah, I can read them. All, all in support, so no, we don't need them. Okay. <laughs> you, you can just summarize them, thank you. Um, they, they said that they have no issue and doesn't decrease their use of their own properties. So. All right, thank you. And then I have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no concerns with the application. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, is the agent or, uh, here or, um, or the applicant? I don't believe it's the application. Is there anyone here wishing to speak in support of this application? Yes. Okay. You can bring them on then, please. Hello. Hello. Oh, Hello. Okay, we can hear you. Yes. Good morning, committee. It's Wayne and Christine Marks, uh, four seven one six Carpenter Court, Claremont, Ontario, L one Y one A eight. Okay. Uh, we just wanted to make comment on our variance and just give uh, the main reason for doing so is basically safety wise. Um, our boathouse only has a narrow walkway around it, and we now have a two-year-old grandson who is starting to enjoy the lake, and we just wanted to make a slightly larger area where we could fit some chairs and have a safe passage area. That's, that's the reason for doing our uh, extension. <clears throat> okay. And was there a uh, building permit for it? Sorry, what's the... Was there a building permit taken out for it? No, this, this, we went ahead um, without doing so. We, um, we apologize for doing that. Um, last year due to COVID, there was such a lumber shortage and uh, contractor shortage that this year we kind of just jumped the gun and knew that there was lumber available and we went ahead with it. So we apologize for doing that. Okay, thank you. Are there questions from the members? Yes, Mr. Bosomer. Um, I'd be interested in how other committee members feel about this. Uh, 
our, our bylaws and official plans are very clear about having natural vegetation uh, across the front of the property. And it's not clear to me whether this is grass down to the stone wall or, um, and there is, by the pictures, there seem to be no natural vegetation other than the trees from the house right to the waterway. And although staff hasn't recommended, I'd be just interested if um, how the uh, applicant would feel um, and how the other uh, committee members feel about adding some natural vegetation in that first, I think it's 10 meters that's required. Yes, may I speak? Uh -huh. Yes, go ahead. Yes, hi. I, we, we do see that uh, there isn't much vegetation and our intention is to request um, some vegetation in there as well as trying to preserve the waterfront because we do see over time that it looks like the land is eroding. So we would be in favor of recommendations to put vegetation in there to preserve the, uh, the shoreline for sure. Okay. How do what community feel with that? Yes, I see one yes. Yes, yes. Two, yes, okay, that's three, that's four, okay. Yeah. So can we put something in on that, Mr. Sharp? Thank you. Right. First, thank the application, the applicant for, for that gesture. I think it's very important that we keep our shorelines as naturally vegetated as proper as we can, given climate change and the rains and uh, that we're getting. So that's a great addition. Well, that's the one we yeah. Sorry. No worries. Uh, okay. Thanks. So with that recommendation, would that mean that we would need permission as far as what kinds of vegetation needs to be done? Who do we apply for that? Uh, through the planning department, they can look after that for you. Thank you. The Muskoka Watershed Organization has some very good guidance about what to do with uh, shoreline vegetation. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you can read the, the, the whole thing then, just a second. Okay, so moved by Member Bosomworth, seconded by Member Creaser, be it resolved that application A-52-21 marks to permit an as-built dock addition with the following variants being granted to permit a cumulative dock width of 41 feet. This variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision and is subject to the following condition, that a site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for plantings in the front yard area. This approval shall re remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. All those uh, in favor.
Sorry, the next application is A53, and that's Ms. Darling. I believe, isn't it? Or did I make it wrong? Thank you, Chair Edwards. That one is my application. Um, okay. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-53 slash 21 in the name of Hartog. The subject property is known municipally as 3864 Muskoka Road 118 West, Unit 5. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan starting on page 243 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect is, uh, of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to construct a dwelling slash garage addition, which will result in 11% lot coverage within 200 feet of the high water mark where 10% is permitted. The variance requested is 1%. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 13 days in advance and two submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Tim Sofko, the township's public works technician. The public works department has no objections. The second submission is by Alex Maholland, the township's deputy chief building official. The development services department has no objections. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection to minor variance application A-53 slash 21 Hartog. Staff have no further comments at this time and I'm happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, is the applicant applicant's agent, I think we have an agent here. Good morning. Good morning. Is, uh, I'm Tracy Owen from the drawing board and I am agent for the Heart Talks. Um, thank you, Caitlin. I think that's a, a fairly straightforward application before you. Uh, we are looking for, uh, in keeping with the official plan, up to one additional uh, percent of lot coverage for the addition. Uh, the addition is actually located more to the rear of the property, so it has very minimal impact on the waterfront view. That portion of the shoreline is well treated, and if uh, if this would most likely not be visible um, other than from the approach from the driveway side. All other aspects of the uh, proposed addition are in compliance with the zoning bylaw um, and the actual area, the location that the addition will be going in may is is cleared uh, as parking right now and would have minimal impact for tree removal. Um, I think uh, if uh, this should uh, be approved, uh, we'd be quite pleased and uh, should council have any questions. The owners are also in attendance and be happy to answer anything that you uh, might like to know. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And uh, would the applicant uh, like to speak on this or is there anyone wishing to speak, speak in support? No? I think the applicant is happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Okay, that's fine. And is there anyone uh, speaking in opposition to this? No? Are there questions from the members? Seeing none. Moved by member Grogan Green, second by member Bosenworth, be it resolved that application A5321 Hotsog to permit the construction of a two story dwelling addition with an attached garage and the following variances being granted. One to permit a lot coverage 5,828 square feet or 11% within 200 feet of the high water mark. These variances is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. That is carried. Thank you. I think now we'll take a five minute uh, comfort break. Thank you.
Okay, we're just waiting for the members to come back on. Good. And the next application is uh, A5421, uh, A and I believe that is uh, uh, Miss Darling. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A5421 in the name of Wolfond and Richard. The subject property is known municipally as 1379 Ross Trevor Road, unit number three. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 264 through 277 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to to construct a two-story boathouse, including an upper level covered area and to recognize an associated as built dock. Relief is requested from the maximum permitted length of 50 feet of the proposed first story portion of a boathouse. The proposed boathouse is 57 feet in length and the variance requested is seven feet. Relief is also requested from the maximum permitted length of 66 feet for a dock the as-built dock is 75 feet in length. The variance requested is nine feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 10 days in advance and two submissions have been received to date. The submission, the first submission is by Tim Sopko, the township's public works technician. The public works department has no objections. The second submission is by Alex Maholland, the township's deputy chief building official. The development services department also has no objections. I prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no concerns with the application. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Darling. And I believe the applicant and the applicant's agent is here. Yeah. Would you like to bring them in, please? Uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, Chair Edwards, and good morning to the committee and township staff. Uh, my name is Ellen Ferris, and I am with MHBC Planning. Uh, my address is 113 Collier Street, uh, Barrie, Ontario, L4M1H2. Uh, I'm here today on behalf of Mr. Henry Wolfund and Ms. Rochelle Reichart uh, with respect to minor variance, uh, their minor variance application at 1379 Rostra Road. Um, township staff have done an excellent job summarizing the application uh, and the four tests of minor variance within the report. Uh, so I will endeavor to keep my comments and presentation this morning brief. Um, I did prepare a brief uh, slide deck. Uh, if... Get that up, perfect. Super. The property is located at 1379 Ross River Road. Uh, and as noted, the minor variances have been uh, requested to facilitate development of a boathouse and associated dock uh, of which the dock has been constructed. Um, it is worth noting that uh, the dock and boathouse are of a scale permitted uh, by the zoning bylaw. Uh, the variances requested uh, are related to the distance um, from the shoreline uh, into uh, Lake Rosso. So it's actually more of the, the, the length projection uh, of which the variances are related to. Um, and I guess the summit history with respect to construction of the dock, um, the dock and boathouse are uh, associated with a site plan uh, agreement on the property. Uh, however, when the dock was constructed, um, it was constructed at a slight angle uh, to avoid a rocky outcrop. Um, to allow for access into a, a, a bay um, um, associated with the dock, uh, which is why uh, the variances are being requested. So effectively the, the dock has, has been constructed at a slight angle, which has changed the projection into Lake Rosso. And uh, we, I have a figure which uh, will illustrate this in a, in a minute. Um, so as you can see by the, the aerial, the property has a large uh, recessed frontage um, along Lake Rosso, uh, which will contribute to contribute to a separation of the proposed development uh, and buffering of uh, the development from neighboring uses. Um, next slide, please. 
So just to clarify, and as noted by township staff, um, the requested variances uh, relate to the projection of a dock house and boathouse into Lake Rosso. Uh, specifically, the applicants are requesting to uh, recognize a dock uh, which extends 75 feet from the high water mark into the navigable waterway instead of the permitted 66 feet, uh, which is a variance of nine feet as noted by staff. Uh, as well as to permit a boathouse, uh, which extends um, 57 feet uh, from the high water mark into the navigable waterway instead of the permitted 50 feet, uh, which is a variance of seven feet. Um, and as noted, all other applicable provisions of the township zoning bylaw, including uh, width, length and height of the proposed boathouse and dock uh, are all satisfied. So it's really just this projection uh, that needs to be addressed through the variance. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so this figure was included within um, our staff report, which was included with the, the or sorry, our, our planning justification report, which was included with the application. Uh, and it illustrates the extent of the variances that are requested. Um, on the right, uh, you can see the permitted orientation uh, of the boathouse and dock uh, that's permitted by the zoning bylaw. And on the left-hand side is the uh, variance uh, that is being requested. Um, so effectively the darker shading is the uh, boathouse and the lighter shading is the dock. And the hatched areas are the um, locations in which uh, the dock and boathouse uh, do not meet the provisions of the uh, zoning bylaw with, re uh, with respect to projection. Uh, as they project further than uh, what is permitted. Uh, so it's effectively just these two small corner areas uh, in which the variance is being applied for. Uh, and you can see the areas further north um, actually are set back further than what is required in the zoning bylaw. Uh, next slide, please. So as previously noted, uh, the reason for the required shift uh, in the uh, dock when it was constructed was uh, largely due to existing shoreline conditions, uh, which as you can see in the right-hand photo are uh, fairly rocky. Uh, there's a bit of an outcrop in that area. Uh, so accordingly, when the dock was constructed, uh, it was just shifted ever so slightly to avoid this area to allow for uh, access uh, into the, the first boat slip, um, as you can see in the, in the left-hand photo. Uh, but what this has resulted in is that uh, corner of the dock and the uh, boathouse that will be constructed um, just projecting ever so slightly further into Lake Rosso and out of compliance with the zoning bylaw. So next slide, please. So these are a bit repetitive to townships uh, staff's conclusions, but um, from our review, uh, overall the proposed boat house and dock um, are a permitted use in both the township official plan and zoning bylaw. Uh, and the development is characteristic of other uh, boat houses and docks, uh, both within the township and along the shoreline of Lake Rosso. Um, the requested variances represent uh, a small deviation uh, in the permitted angle and projection <clears throat> from the zoning requirements, uh, which reflect uh, existing shoreline conditions. Um, the boathouse and dock are of a scale uh, with respect to width, uh, length and height, uh, which are otherwise permitted in the zoning bylaw. Um, and the development is appropriate uh, for the property given the large uh, recessed water frontage, uh, which will contribute towards separation and buffering of the development um, from neighboring uses. And, and largely the, the requested variances will result in really no discernible visual impacts from what is otherwise permitted in the zoning bylaw, as illustrated by that uh, figure a couple slides ago. Um, and, and likewise will result in no um, impacts on uh, navigation in, in Lake Rosso from what is otherwise uh, permitted in the zoning bylaw. Uh, next slide, please. So overall, the requested variances are deemed to meet the four tests uh, of a minor variance and uh, represent good planning. Um, and accordingly, we would uh, request that committee approve the 
the request as recommended um, by township staff. Um, so thank you. And uh, I would be happy to answer any questions that uh, committee may have with respect to the, the application before them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Ms. Ferris. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? No, seeing none. Are there questions from the members? Yes, Mr. Bosworth. Um, my only concern is the intent of the bunkie on the top of the boathouse has a area labeled kitchen, and I think that turns it into a residence rather than a bunkie. But the agent like to answer that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, it's it's my understanding that it, it is uh, um, the intent to be used as a sleeping cabin, and it has not been raised by township staff uh, as a concern. Um, it's the same similar site plans that were provided through the site plan approval process, and um, uh, that's it's my understanding that it is to be used as a sleeping cabin. So. Any other questions or comments on that? Uh, I didn't mind a comment from staff on that because I don't think kitchens are allowed in a bunkie. No. Mr. Sharp, would you like to comment on that or? Uh... Sure. Through you, Chair Edwards, uh, it's a good question, and um, it's one of the key uh, distinctions between a sleeping cabin and a dwelling, as the ability to have a kitchen, more specifically a stovetop. Um, in this case, the, the reference to a kitchen may have just been, um, uh, it may not be, uh, that may not be the intent, uh, is to have a stovetop in the, the upper level, but certainly um, as part of uh, our process of circulating a notice of decision, uh, we could ensure that uh, that label is removed um, from the plans attached to the notice of decision, uh, just to, to make sure that going forward, there's no confusion. We'd also note in the minutes, uh, Ms. Ferris's uh, indication that the intent is to utilize that uh, upper level as a, a sleeping cabin and not as a dwelling. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Quinn. I think that the applicant has done a great job of keeping tree cover and uh, doing what he can to protect the shorelines. And um, I think he's done a good job and I trust that he'll carry forward in the same manner. Second that. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, moved by member Quinn, second by member Creaser. Be it resolved that application a5421 Wolfhound Ecker to permit the construction of a two story boat house, including an upper level covered area, and to recognize and associate it as built off with the following variances being granted. One, to permit the first story portion of a boat house to be 57 feet in length on a lot with more than 400 feet of lot frontage. Two, to permit a dock to be 75 feet in length. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that's Carrie. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good day. And the next uh, application is A5521, and I believe that is uh, Ms. Walker. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-55-21 in the name of Russo. The subject property is known municipally as 1264 Rosso Lake Road 2, Unit 1. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan starting on page 293 of the agenda package. 
The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to construct a dock addition, <coughs> excuse me, 72 feet in length where 66 feet is permitted. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 13 days in advance and two submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician. The Public Works Department has no objections. The second submission is by Alex Moholland, the Township's Deputy Chief Building Official. The Development Services Department has no objections. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection to minor variance application A-55-21, Russo. Staff have no further comments at this time, but I'm happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, is the applicant or applicant's agent here? And I believe we have the architect. Uh, good morning, Chair and committee members. So, let's see here. Just turn my camera on. Uh, my name is Lauren Boyer of 3378 Guildwood Drive in Burlington, Ontario, L7N L1L5. I am the agent representing the property owners, Dom and Christine Russo, and also the architect who has been involved in the permit application for both the dock and the boathouse currently under construction. The dock has been constructed on site to the same dimension shown on a dock permit issued in December 2020. Um, however, a variance occurred due to a minor deviation in its placement on site, uh, similar to the previous application. Uh, the as built dock is in the same location shown on the issued permit. However, it was unintentionally rotated about five degrees, causing a small portion of the southwest corner to extend beyond 66 feet of the high water mark. This minor rotation on site may be partially attributed to discrepancies between the high watermark plotted on a 2008 survey used to obtain the dock permit and uh, current site conditions, which were verified by Coot, Hiley, and Gemmet surveyors on May 17, 2021. While being constructed on site, the northeast corner was pulled tight to the high watermark, unknowingly causing the southwest corner to rotate slightly further from the shoreline given its ir irregular shape. This was illustrated on a site plan within the planning report, but I'm happy to share my screen if clarifications needed on the extent of the variance. Uh, a few things I wanted to note, uh, the variance results in only 68 square feet of dock to extend beyond 66 feet of the high water mark. The actual dimension of the dock from end to end is under 64 feet in length. Uh, the variance will enable the dock to be squared off, but it will not result in the dock to appear visibly longer. The variance should not result in any negative impacts in boat traffic or navigation. The variance uh, should not negatively impact any neighboring views given its low profile and placement in the center of the property shoreline, which is nearly 185 meters or six, over 600 feet of frontage. This is the only variance requested for the site. The dock and the boathouse otherwise comply with all other applicable zoning bylaws. Uh, site plan approval has also been granted for a new cottage, which is also compliant with all zoning provisions. The cottages will be located towards the back of the lot at the top of a very steep slope, and it will not be visible or in close proximity to the shoreline. So the views you see in the package of the planning report um, regarding vegetation um, and the shoreline condition will be maintained. Uh, I want to reiterate that it was always our intention to work within the provisions of the zoning bylaw for all structures on site, um, but this was an unfortunate error and I hope Cindy will agree with us. Uh, we we'll agree with Plenty's comments that uh, this is minor um, and enable the property owners to build the dock uh, to the dimensions noted on the issue permit. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, happy to provide any additional clarifications from the committee. Thank you very much. Is the uh, applicant or anyone wishing to speak in support of this application? I can bring the applicant in. If, if, if they would like to, to speak, they're welcome. I, I don't have any comments. Lauren's covered it well, thank you. Okay, very good, thank you. Just always give you the opportunity. I appreciate any, that. Anyone else here wishing to speak in support? Anyone in opposition? Yeah. Other questions from the members? Seeing none. Moved by 
member of Grove and Green, second by member Treaser, be it resolved that application A5521 Russo to permit an as built dock with the following variances being granted. One to permit a dock to be 72 feet in length. This variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? Thank you very much. All those in favor. And that is carried. Thank you. And the next application is uh, A5621 laid law, and that is Ms. Darling, I believe. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A5621 in the name of laid law. The subject property is known municipally as 2867 Muskoka Road 118 West, unit number five. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plans on 312 to 313 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to construct a port, port addition with a rooftop sun deck onto an existing one-story boathouse. Relief is requested from the maximum permitted lot coverage within 200 feet from the high water mark on a category one lake of 10%. The proposed development will result in lot coverage of 10.9%, which is 2,163. 2, the variance requested is 0.9%, which equates to 38 feet. Relief is also requested from the side yard setback of 45 feet. The proposed one-story boathouse with rooftop sun deck will be 38 feet from the northeasterly interior side lot line. Variance requested is seven feet. Relief is also requested from the maximum permitted cumulative single story boathouse width of 16%. The proposed boathouse and rooftop sun deck will be 23 feet. The variance requested is seven feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 10 days in advance and three submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Tim Sopko, the township's public works technician. The public works department has no objections. The second submission is by Alex Maholland, the township's chief, deputy chief building official and the development services department also has no objections. The third submission is by a group of neighbors. So the submission was sent in by John Cutkey, Bill and Katie Verity, Daniel and Kevin Rainey, Kev Ken and Doreen Murray and Robert Schick who are adjacent neighbors and I'm going to read their email. Good afternoon planning department. We as neighbor neighboring properties of five Oak Ridge Road would like to go on record to submit to you that we oppose any further minor variances or further development of the boathouse structure or shoreline. The construction of boathouse was given a stock work order earlier this year for having no building permit and being too close to the neighboring property. We strongly oppose anything further anything further in construction. We have not received any notification by mail as of yet regarding it. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have concerns with the application, specifically the requested variances from lot coverage and cumulative boathouse width requirements and recommended that the application be defeated. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Okay. Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair Edwards and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Eric Muntz of the Deconin Group. Uh, it's 1A Lee Valley Drive, Unit 3, Port Carling, Ontario, P0B, 1J0. Um, so yeah, what we're looking at here is a, a boat port addition with a sun deck to an existing one-story boathouse. 
the proposed boat port addition sits on the northeast side of the boat house and is located over an existing dock. Uh, the boat port is supported by the existing uh, steel piles of the dock. So the boat port width is governed by the existing pile locations. Uh, if you look at figure three of the report, uh, you can kind of get an idea of approximately what the size of the addition would be as it sits over the dock. Um, and you can see that uh, the, the dock on the northeast side of the boathouse is rather small in size already, and the boat port would just be sitting over top of that. And uh, just the reasoning for the addition being on the northeast side of the boathouse is to utilize the existing dock supports, uh, as mentioned, but also because there's more space between the boathouse and the lot lines on this side of the property. And I'm told that the neighbor on this side of the property supports the addition. Uh, I certainly believe um, that the addition provides little um, impact to the overall built form as the addition is open on three sides and is well below the maximum height requirements. And I can certainly appreciate staff's concerns with the existing vegetation at the shoreline. And we can certainly look at ways to improve this. Uh, thanks again and happy to answer any questions at this time. All right, thank you very much. Is the uh, uh, applicant wishing to speak on this? Or anyone else in support? I don't think the applicant wishes to uh, we have someone in opposition. Yeah, I, I will ask that after. We just want to make sure anybody wanted to speak in support. No. No, okay. Anyone in opposition then, please. Good morning, committee uh, and chair. My name is Danielle Rainey. I live at five Oak Ridge Road, which is right next to uh, the property. And I wrote a lengthy email to the planning department. Uh, I, wrote, I wrote the email to Elizabeth Markle and Rachel Mulholland. And I received an email back saying that it was going to be added, but I did not hear you read it. I just want to verify that you did receive it. Uh, can someone uh, verify that? I, re I received an email from Elizabeth Markle on October 7th saying, uh, we've received your email. Uh, you've had an in overwhelming increase in planning and building inquiries, but that this would be added to part of the public record. Okay. Um, well, since you're on now, if you have, have it, would you like to read it to us? Sure, I've got it pulled up, so I will read it. So I, I said, I'd like to go on record and say in writing that we as the direct neighbors of the property who's being and the property who is being encroached on, we oppose any further development of the boathouse belonging to five Oak Ridge Road. Uh, we also would like to say that we really like the new neighbors who brought the property earlier this year. Wayne and Debbie are wonderful people. We do not wish to have any sort of animos animosity between us but we do need to protect our privacy. Um, I grew up on this bay. We are year round residents. This is our primary home. We do not live anywhere else, but here. I grew up on this bay on Oak Ridge Road, nine doors down. Uh, we purchased the home that we are now in as our year round forever home. And the decisions being made today to further develop the shoreline greatly, greatly impact me and my family. A flat, boathouse roof with a deck would look directly into our home as well as onto our upper and lower deck, our dock, our boathouse, and our hot tub. There would be literally nowhere that we could sit outside and have any kind of privacy at all. The, the pr properties on this bay are quite narrow in the area that we are in and the shorelines are quite small. So the people who are on the list of opposition, they've all been on this bay for a very long time and they don't wish to, it's already so overcrowded and overdeveloped. They don't wish to see any additional developments on this bay. 
Um, our realtor has told me that if the boathouse next to us does have a roof deck on it, it will greatly impact the value of our home, seeing as we would no longer have any privacy. When we moved here, there was two small cottages to the left of us. Kevin and Sylvia Land purchased these cottages, tore them down and built new. The project was not well thought out from the start. The one closest to us was, was, was built as close as possible to the lot line, already greatly decreasing our privacy. Then they started the boathouse construction earlier this year and they were given a stop work order because they started building much too close to the property line without a building permit. Uh, they tried to construct it during the, in the cloak of darkness in February when nobody else was on the bay uh, and it was taking too long to get a building permit, I was told at that time. So they just started construction in the wrong spot without a permit. Uh, the second cottage that they're constructing is nearing completion and they've started construction on another property on Dawson Road on Lake Rosso. These people have no intention of staying in these houses. They're requiring minor variances so they can sell for top dollar and move on to their next project. Please, please do not allow any further construction of the shoreline for the sake of the people who actually live here and will be impacted for years to come. It is not the fault of the new owners that the boathouse was constructed where it was or that it was designed the way it was uh, and sold with the intention of needing variances. Uh, it's unfortunate that they have a boathouse and dock with not a lot of dock space, but on a property of less than 100 feet and no pre-existing dock or boathouse, there isn't room for a big dock or boathouse. Uh, earlier in the year, Sylvia Land offered me a large sum of money to not say anything about this and to not oppose the boathouse and keep my mouth shut. However, this is worth so much more to me than money. As I said, this is our forever home and um, we can't be bought. So I really, really do appreciate your time and thought and help with all of this. And that's all I had to say. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in opposition to this? Could you bring them in, please? Uh, just, oh, uh, just just one second before you do that. Uh, uh, Mr. Sharp, would you like to, to comment? Uh, thank you, Chair Edwards, and thank you for your submission, uh, Ms. Rainey. Um, unfortunately, I think we we're uh, scrambling this morning uh, coming off the long weekend, and we did receive uh, your first submission, and I think there was some confusion uh, on our part about your second, so I do apologize, and I'm glad that you were here to, to speak to that. Thank you. Okay, hope that clears that up. And if you bring the other party in. They are both here, uh, Sylvia Lynn and Katie. Okay. Hello? 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 Hello, okay, go ahead, we can hear you. Hi, um, I am, my name's Sylvia Land, 293 Ridgewood Road, um, Scarborough, Ontario, M1C2X3 is my address. Um, just in, in conversation regarding the boathouse, uh, I do have all the permits, um, For some reason, I can't hear you. Sorry, and that try again. I'm um, sorry. How far did did you hear me? Up to okay, what? Okay, just uh, you can start start over again. Then we make sure we haven't missed anything. Do you have my address, or should I start completely over? Uh, uh, do you have your address, Rachel? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have your address. Go ahead. Um, I'm just, I'm just calling to let everybody know that I do have the adequate permits in place. Um, 
I thought that I built a pretty nice product. Um, I'm not going to slander my neighbors as they have done to me. Um, I, it was a mistake. The, the boathouse should have been built 45 feet from their property line and it ended up 35. I thought the rooftop deck was going to be on the boathouse. And when I had sold the property, that is, that was my understanding, but that was a mistake. So therefore we have tried to accommodate the new owners by putting the, the, the deck on top of the remaining part of the dock, um, which is legal, but I guess because of the lot coverage, it's a little above that, but had it Oh, we've lost you again for some reason. And that can you and that come back on? We can't hear you. Hello, Miss Land. Yes, I guess you're okay. not hearing me. Uh, no, uh, and that uh, I think we lost you about lot coverage. Um. So therefore, I was lot coverage. Um. Yes, and so I was trying to. Don't keep losing you. Sorry. No, and that can you uh, put your speaker on? We 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 can't hear you. Is it our our end or uh, or the I think, it's, I think it's on my end. It keeps cutting okay. out. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, you're frozen again. No. Sorry, we can't hear you. Okay, you're back on, I think. No. Perhaps you should stop the video. Yeah, if, if, if try turning your, your uh, video off and, and, and just speak and see if that brings it up. No, we still can't hear. Can you turn your video off and just speak okay. through your mic? Uh, stop video. Does that work? Yeah, that's working now. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I'm sorry. I just wanted to apologize for any confusion. Um, I, I'm not, I've kind of lost my train of thought, but uh, I, I'm not... I own um, nine Oak Ridge Road and the property is just finishing and um, I have no, no problem with what is going to, uh, what's asked here. And um, that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry for the uh, confusion. No, the I audience. think it's my internet, I'm sorry. Okay, that's fine. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in either support or opposition to this application? Uh, yes, uh, please. Okay, could you bring them in, please? Right. Okay. Okay, would you like to speak? Who are you looking for? Sorry. Okay, go ahead. We can hear you. Um, I'm thinking it's me. It's Catherine Verity. Good morning, yes. Claire Edwards, community members. Um, I'm at 2867 Highway 118, 11 Oak Ridge. And I am opposed to this minor variance, basically in support of everything that Danielle said. And uh, <clears throat> that uh, it basically opposes the rules that seem to be 
running a little crazy lately. So I just want to be on record that I oppose this. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And is there anyone else wishing to speak in opposition to this application? No. No? Are there questions from the members? No, no, no. Yes. Okay, Mr. Uh, Member Bonds. I agree with the staff positions, and I think this should be defeated. Um, this is an undersized lot. There's no way it should have a uh, rooftop patio on the boathouse. And um, I just, I don't think there's any of this should be allowed. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Quinn and Member Quinn. <laughs> I'd like to, does this existing boathouse permit for what's there, does it have uh, permission for uh, a patio upstairs or sitting area? Yes, Mr. Sharp, did you want to speak on that? Just a second. Through you, Chair Edwards, uh, I can confirm that a building permit uh, was issued uh, for the boathouse. Um, the rooftop is not permitted to function as a sun deck because uh, of its um, location within the required side yard that would otherwise be required for a, uh, a rooftop sun deck. So the, uh, as it stands now, the existing boathouse is not permitted uh, to function uh, with a rooftop that's used as a sun deck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sharp. So, okay, any other uh, questions or comments? I will read the motion. Moved by Member Priester, second by Member Bosomworth, be it resolved that application A5621 Lay Law to permit the construction of a boat port addition, the rooftop sun deck, onto an existing one story boathouse with the following variances being granted. One, to remit a lot coverage of 2,000. 160 square feet or 10.9 within the lot area 200 feet from the high water mark. Two, to permit a one story boathouse with a roof top sun deck 38 feet from the northeasterly side lot line. Three, to permit a cumulative single story width to be 23 feet. These variants are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? Sorry, uh, and that, Mr. Muntz. Uh, it, it, it's gone to uh, committee. Unless they have a question, I can't let you speak. Is there anyone else uh, with the uh, committee? Is there any other comments? All those in favor? Okay. All those opposed? That's carried. Sorry, that's that's to defeat it. Okay. Thank you very much. And then we'll go on to the next one. And the last one is A fifty seven twenty-three. And that's Ms. Darden. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A5721 in the name of Diane Causey. The subject property is known municipally as 1532 Mortimer's Point Road, unit number 10. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan and drawings on page 332 to 340 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to demolish part of an existing one-story boathouse and boat port and construct a dock addition and a one-story boathouse addition with a rooftop deck. Relief is requested from the maximum permitted coverage on the entire lot. The permitted lot coverage on a category one lake is 10% or 2560 square feet in this case. The proposed boathouse will result in 4,023 square feet or 15.7%. The variance requested is 5.7% or 1,463 square feet over what is permitted. Please note that the existing lot coverage is 4,067 square feet, which is 15.9%. 
Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 10 days in advance and three submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Tim Sopko, the township's public works technician. The public works department has no objections. The second submission is by Alex Maholland, the township's chief building official. The development services department has no objections, but would like to note that the building permit application that will be associated with this minor variance may trigger the requirement for a new or a modified septic system mm -hmm. due to the increase in floor area, sorry, due to the increase in floor area and the age of the existing system. However, insufficient information is available at this time to determine the extent of any potential modifications, but this will be reviewed at the time of any future building permits. Um, the, third the third submission is from John Arnold and he's an area neighbor and they have no comments or concerns with the application. Staff have prepared a detailed report for the committee's consideration. If committee is considering approval of the application, staff recommend that the covered slash aluminum frame boat, part, boat port to be removed. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. And is the applicant or applicant's agent wishing to speak on this? I believe you have the agent. The agent is. Okay. Yes, good morning, Chair Edwards. Glad to see it's still morning and you're at the end of your meeting. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Um, my name is uh, Terry Ledger. I'm agent for the applicant 167 Medora Street, Fort Carling, Ontario, P0B1J0. Um, so what this is, is a reconfiguration of the existing boathouse. Um, the lot coverage does decrease a little bit, uh, but because we're moving where it's located on the boathouse, uh, a variance is required. I think the benefits to this um, proposal are that the um, cumulative width of dock and boathouse will be decreased by 13, over 13 feet, which I think is uh, helps sort of diminish the built um, form over the natural form, which is in compliance with our official plan. Uh, I'm here to answer any questions uh, committee might have. And that's it. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Ledger. And is the applicant or anyone wishing to speak in support of this application? No. Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? No. No? Okay. Uh, are there questions from the members? Seeing none. Move by member Quinn, second by member Grogan Green. Be it resolved that Application A5721 Die and Casey to permit the construction of a one story boathouse addition with a rooftop sun deck with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a lot coverage of 4,023 square feet or 15.5% on the entire lot area. This variance is granted, shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision, and is subject to the following condition that the covered slash aluminum frame boat port be removed. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or any comments? All those in favor. That's carried. Thank you. And uh, just before I, I read the last motion, uh, I don't know if anybody else uh, on the uh, committee have noticed, but some of the signs are like stapled to trees and that they're so far off the road, you can't really read them. And that, and I, I don't know what we can do with that, but uh, maybe staff can look into that, Mr. Sharp, and see, because like I say, a lot of these are you know, 20, 25 feet off the road. We should be putting them uh, on a stake so that people can read them. But it's, I don't know if any other committee members have noticed that or not. Okay. Anyway, I'll read the last motion. Moved by Member Quinn, second by Member Grogan Green. Be it resolved, the committee adjourned at 11-11. All those in favor? 